Blessings, I am back with another Ministry Moments with Minister Sharonda. We are in for round two of the series, Letting the Shaken Make You. Perhaps you may ask me on today, what is the shaken, Minister Sharonda? What is the shaken? I'm going to tell you, the shaken is the time in your life that you was hit with a blow that literally made you buckle to your knees. You didn't know if you was coming or going. Amen. Glory to God. But in spite of, you were able to... Um, be sustained. You were able to get up and live anyhow. That's what I want to tell you tonight. Amen. The guest uh, of the hour is none other than my best friend, um, Lady Carmel Smith. She's been through so much in her life, but amen. She is a storm barrier. Amen. Glory to God. And I want to get to encourage you on tonight that you can bear whatever comes your way. Amen. I'm introducing to some and presenting to others, Lady Carmel Smith. Thank you, Minister Sharonda, for having me this morning. Love you to pieces. Listen, I'm just so excited about what you are doing. Hurt to Heal Ministries is awesome. Minister Sharonda, girl, listen, you have walked and prayed me through many things, honey, and we've shared many things together. And so I'm so blessed to be able to share just a snippet of my testimony. I just want to encourage you today that behind every strong person is a story that gave them no choice. Listen, coming up, being raised from a little girl from six to 14 years old, I was given up for adoption at six years old. And this is nothing against my mother. Let me be clear. I love my mama. She wanted best for me at the time because she had me at a younger age. And so she gave me to a couple that she entrusted my life with. And so I do not hold her accountable for that. But anyway, uh, shortly after I had gone to live with the family, uh, my adopted mother passed away. And after my adopted mother passed away, I began to take on the role that a little girl should never be privy to at the age of seven, six and seven years old. And I endured that up until the age of 14 when I was tired of going through what I was going through. And I knew that something was better for me. I, I, I just knew it was something that what I did not understand at the time because I was so young, but I, I, I knew. And so previously, a week before I had left and ran away, I had saw my Aunt Sally at a KFC uh, in, in a little town that we you know, live in. Uh, and she, we exchanged number. I looked at my auntie in such distress and my auntie immediately was in sync with me and we exchanged numbers. But see, this is all a part of God's plan. Hold on. We exchanged numbers. A week later, an incident happened to where I was physically abused and I waited until my adopted father went to sleep and I left. But let me tell you something. Anytime you leave a situation, that situation comes with a price. That price was my family being shot, my mother being shot, my cousin taking a bullet for me because at the time when he shot her, we looked so much alike when we were younger, he thought that he had shot me. But she pushed my brother, she pushed her brother out of the way and took a bullet uh, for me. Listen. God is so faithful. You may think the enemy wants you to think that you are alone in certain situations that you are going through, but you're never alone. When you don't have anyone to talk to, you have God. You have God to talk to. Do you understand what I'm saying? I went from that situation, having my mother being shot, having my cousin being shot, all because he was looking for me to hurt me. But see, God had a purpose and a plan for my life. And I am indebted to my family forever behind this. I went from that to dealing with the situation with my son that had a mental break and took lives. In that moment that my child did that, I was like, God, what more? What, what more could, could I endure from going through so much as a child and as a young adult, you know, and into my married life, you know, just going through so much, you know, being lied on and talked about, people misusing you for the heart that you have. You know what I'm saying? The issue that happened with my son literally stretched my soul to out of its very existence. 
in that moment, no one could have ever told me that I would have to endure the things that I endured in the process of going through with my child. There were times that I did not know if I was going or coming. The sorrow that I felt um, from the lives that was taken, you know, me getting up, me praying, you know, for the family. Because at that time, even though it was so much chaos in my world, I did not have time to even think about myself. You know, I was praying for the family and I'm crying and I'm in such distress out of everything that I've ever been through. That one right there hit different. But God... Let me tell you, the deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of the pain. Are you going to go through in your life? Yes, ma'am. Are people going to mistreat you? Are people going to lie on you? Are these situations and things are going to come into your life where you have to be held accountable not only for yourself, but for those that you love? Yes, ma'am. But you have to learn. We have to learn. I learned in the midst of going through, even though that had pulled me from my very nature, you know, the situation with my child, and it hurts deep. That's a thorn in my side that I will forever have. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God, I trusted God through the process. As a little girl, God was always with me. There were times that I experienced things. A lot of the abuse that I experienced as a young girl the bruising and, and things that I should have suffered at that time, I did not. So, honey, let me tell you, there is a God. Do you understand? Life will teach you. Life will hold you accountable for things, whether it's your fault or whether it isn't. The enemy, the enemy will make you feel like you're alone because he doesn't want your testimony to come out to help others. We go through things to be able to help others. In the midst of my going through, although I was being slain, yet did I trust God. Although I didn't understand what had happened and what was going on in the situations in my life as a child, the many situations that I don't even have time to hit on as a young adult, as a young adult and then my son going through what he's going through having to deal with a mental break uh with my child you know being up under so much duress things that he did not talk about you understand that that just just took him to that point the sorrow that i felt the sorrow that i still feel because i still go through but i'm trusting god through this process i trust god because i love him i trust god because i have no choice to last year was a year that took me and my family through many waves and tyrants having your character questioned through people who were supposed to know you or who people who have known you all, you know, your life, you know, to have your character question in a situation that was so dire. I did not understand at the time and it hurt my feelings, but I made it through that because I understood the, I understand the other side of things. See, when you entrust your life in God and you really have to depend on the Lord to bring you through the situations that you're in. God is a God that is faithful even during the midst of you going through what you're going through. To have experienced everything that I've experienced in my life and not look like anything that I've gone through. God is faithful. At the end of 2020, I had to put myself you know, during, during that time, I had to put myself on the back burner because when I, when that happened to me with my child, you know, everybody that was close to me, I had friends that were going through. Listen, I didn't have time to wallow in, in, in my, in my sadness. You know, I'm praying for my son's mind. I'm praying for all the families that was involved. People that were close to me were going through. I mean, it was like a whirlwind effect of just, just things seemed like they were spiraling out of control. So I did not have time to 
wallow in the things that I was going through because see, I had to intercede for my sister. I had to intercede for my friends. I had to, because at that time, even though I was going through and I did not understand why that I had been given this burden to bear, it's not about that. Life doesn't stop. When you understand life and when you understand that God is a God, who is loving, who is faithful, a God who will bring you up out of the mirror clay, the muddy waters, honey. You understand that you won't be in this situation for long. In the process of me tearing while I was going through for my sisters and for my friends and for everybody that needed me at that point in time, although as well as my child, listen, God came through on some things. Do you understand? Pertaining to my son, pertaining to his situation. God came through on some things in healing. See, that event happened for me. Yes, it happened with my son, but see, that was to wake me up too. A lot of times we get so comfortable in life and in situations, you know, that we tend to get a little laxed, you know, in our reverencing and our praising and our talking to God. So even though, you know, that trial, I went through that trial, you know, with my baby and my childhood having to deal. God healed me from that. That was moments that I could not say a word. See, God had me in a place where I had to sit still and not say anything because see, he was intervening on my behalf. He was intervening on behalf of my child. At the end of 2020, I had to still, even though I was still going through and even though I was still, I'm, the, the hurt and the severity of, of, of loss, you know, as such a, a great cost, my sister, my nephew, ended up losing his life in December, Christmas morning. So see, I still didn't have time to wallow in what the devil wanted me to wallow in. See, I had to get up. I had to, I was like, God, when that happened and my mother called me, I was like, oh my God. I said, Lord, we can't take another hit. But God, but through these hits that I know that God allows at times, I still trust him. I still love him. I still give him my life. You know why? Because when I didn't have anybody else, I had God. When I didn't have anybody else, I had God. Friendships were lost. Relationships were lost. But God. But God. So I encourage you today, don't hide your scars. Wear them as proof that God heals. You, the things that you go through is to help someone else. Your testimony, my testimony, just the many testimonies of the, the many men and women who have gone through and have made it through, that's to help someone else. Don't ever get so caught up where you lose sight of your worship and praise because that is the very thing that will bring you through. I love you. I encourage you to tell your story. You're not in this alone. When you don't have anyone else, you have God. Peace and blessings unto you. Trust God in the process of going through the good times and the bad times. He will definitely see you through. Mwah! To you, Lady Carmel. God bless you with such a powerful, such an anointed woo, testimony on today. I thank God for you, for you allowing the Lord to use you to bless many. I don't own rights to the music in the background, but I could think all I could think about, all I could hear was William Murphy saying, You are my strength. It takes the strength of God to endure hard trials. It takes the strength of God, amen, to, to go through and, 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 and yet be able to, to be, you know, to stand and yet to be able to be cold in your right mind and yet you want to fight on, yet want to get hold of the blood stained battle, yet want to believe, yet want to trust. Amen. We thank God for you on today. Uh, 
Sister Lady Carmel. Amen. You truly were a blessing. Listen, I want to encourage you. Amen. Let the shaking in your life make you. Amen. It caused Sister Carmel to get on her knees. Amen. It caused her to go get closer to God. Amen. The shaking has a purpose in your life. Amen. Glory to God. And let it work for your advantage. Let it work for your good. Glory to God. You can be victorious in spite of what you're going through. Listen, in this life, you will have tribulations. Hallelujah. But it's what you do with it. Amen. It's what you do with it. And I want to say that to my family. In the time of bereavement, we lost um, my cousin on um, early this morning. Amen. Glory to God. We got to rely on the strength of God. The strength of God will carry you through the hardest, the hardest, the most difficult times in your life. I'm riding off his strength right now. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord, we'll be consumed. Amen. But rely on the strength of God and he'll take you through. Listen, this is another ministry moment with Minister Sharonda. We'll be back on tomorrow with part three. Let the shaking in your life make you. God bless you.